This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic. I'm going to talk about solutions, roots, and zeros. So first of all, I'm going to start out with an equation because that's what you first learn when you begin algebra. You learn how to solve an equation. So for instance, an equation might be something like x minus 3 equals 5 and you're trying to solve. So usually the directions will be solve x minus 3 equals 5. So to do that we can add 3 to both sides right? and we'll get x equals 8 and we think that's going to be the solution but we check it. So to check it you write down the equation we plug in 8 for x, so we're going to go over here and plug in 8 for x, and we simply do the order of operations on the left-hand side, which is simply 8 minus 3, and then we do order of operations on the right-hand side, but there's, it's already simplified to a number. So we get that, um, yes, this seems to be the solution, and that's what we're looking for. See, we say 5 is the solution. All right. Another word we use for solution is root. We can say 5 is the solution or the root of the equation. All right? So root is basically another word for solution. Now, this is called a linear equation, x minus 3 equals 5 because the exponent on the variable is to the first power. All right? So when we have a linear equation to the first power, we might get one solution, but we definitely will not get more than one solution. This is an example of where you might get no solution. What if I said x plus 3 equals x plus 1, and I try to solve this? I might subtract x from both sides and that would say 3 equals 1, uh, which is basically nonsense, right? So we would say this has no solution. And another way we write that is braces. We don't put anything in there, no solution. Or we also might just say there are no roots. Okay? So whether you say there's no solution, no roots, or you show that there's nothing in here, we get that there's no solution to x plus 3 equals x plus 1. And as it turns out, if the highest exponent on the variable is 1, there can be no more then one solution. Okay? So it doesn't mean there's going to be one solution, but there can't be more than one solution. So usually when you're solving equations, you're, you are going to get one solution when you have a linear one like, you know, x minus 3 equals 7. For instance, we're going to get one solution. Can you do that in your head? Just add 3 to both sides and the solution is 10. But there's no way you're going to have two different numbers that make that work. All right, so here's another equation. Notice this time the exponent is 2. This is a quadratic, and there's different ways you can solve this. One of the ways you could solve this equation, when you have a quadratic, is you set it equal to 0. So subtract 8 from both sides to get x squared minus 9. Factor. And then set each, equ each um, factor equal to 0 and this will give you negative 3 or 3. So this equation has two solutions, negative 3 or 3. There are two solutions, or I could say I have two roots. Now this time, since the exponent is 2, if the highest exponent is 2, you can't have more than two roots. Again, you may come up with no roots, 
no solutions. You might come up with one solution, but there's not going to be more than two solutions. What's an example where you might get one solution? Can you think of something? How about this one, x squared equals zero? Hmm. Well, there's only one solution to this, and that is x equals zero. So for this one, the roots, there's really only one roots, is just the number zero, right? So our solution is just zero. Okay, so first of all, uh, one of the things we want to note is that whatever the highest exponent is on the variable, that tells you the most number of roots you can have. All right, so a polynomial equation in one variable cannot have more roots, which remember roots are just solutions, than the highest exponent on the variable. So we, we just looked at a couple equations so far. We looked at a linear equation like, you know, x minus 3 equals 7, right? We looked at um, something like, what was the other one? I think x squared minus 1 equals 8. So this one is going to have uh, no more than one solution, right? And this one's going to have no more than two solutions, etc. Now, we know how to solve linear equations. We just isolate the variable, right? We put the variables on one side, constants on the other, and we do our little rigmarole, uh, what you learn when you first solve equations in algebra, and we're able to solve for x, and then we check to make sure it really is um, a correct solution. If we have a quadratic, that means we have something with a squared term on the variable. This is a quadratic. We're either going to have 0, 1, or 2 roots, because you can't have more than 2 roots. And we know how to solve that. There are different ways you can solve equations like this. The way I did it was subtract 8 and factor, but there are, there's other ways to do this. For instance, what you could do is add 1 to both sides, and then take the square roots of both sides, and get plus or minus 3. That was another way you could have solved this particular equation. You could use the quadratic formula if something doesn't factor or it doesn't work out this way. So we do have methods to solve linear equations and quadratic equations. It gets a little bit trickier if we have something to the third power. So if I had something like x cubed minus 5x squared plus 5x, you know, minus 1 equals 0, this gets a little bit more difficult to solve unless we can factor it. I think I'm, I'm not sure I could factor this one, but, you know, if I could factor it, then I could set each factor equal to zero. So what I'll be doing in later in, in videos is showing you how to find out a way to get the solutions for these. But for now, what we do notice is the highest exponent is three. So what we do know is there are no more than three solutions. No more than three roots or three solutions. Let's look at equations versus functions. On the left, I have an equation with one variable, and so we can solve that. So we could add 4 to both sides to get 2x equals 4. And then we divide both sides by 2, and we find our solution. Our solution set is the number 2. You could check it. That certainly works. So we would say 2 is a root, Let's remember, a root of the equation is the same as the solution of equation. Now on the right-hand side, we have a function. It doesn't make sense to say solve a function. A function is basically a rule. There's inputs, x, and that's called the domain, whatever we can plug in for x. And then we have some outputs, outputs, and that would be the range. So functions are very different than equations. So when we say find the zeros of a function, it really means we're setting f of x equal to zero. This means, so I should really say, um, to find the zeros of a function, let f of x equal 0. And then we get an equation, right? 2x more, 
minus 4 equals 0. We solve it just like we did over here. And we get x equals 2. So what I would say is 2, 2, two is a root of the equation, but 2 is a 0 of the function. And what this really means is um, if you replaced f of x with y, let's say you wanted to see what the graph would look like, it would tell you the x-intercepts. So for instance, here's my function f of x equals 2x minus 4, and if I, I replace f of x with y so that I have an equation with two variables, right? with an x-axis and the y-axis, and I graph that, all right, you could graph this line any way you want. It has a slope of 2, y-intercept of negative 4, etc. This is, this green line is what it looks like. But let's say I didn't know how to do that ahead of time. It says find the zeros of f of x equals 2x minus 4. Basically that means you're plugging in 0 for f of x. Right? So you're solving that equation again, right, that we just did. So x is 2. What this really stands for, 2 um, is the 0, but 2, that's that x-intercept right here. All right? So that will give you the x-intercepts. When you find the zeros of a function, what you're, where you're finding is where they're crossing the x-axis if you were to graph it on the xy plane. So look at the difference here. This is just an equation solve x squared minus 4 equals 0. Different ways to do it. One way is to just factor since it's already set equal to 0. And hopefully you see you're going to get solutions of 2 and negative 2 once you set each of those factors equal to 0. Now another question is find the zeros of f of x equals x squared minus 4. So there are two ways to do it. You can graph the function, okay, or to find the zeros. What that means is set the function equal to 0. So then you just write x squared minus 4 equals 0, which we did over here, right? We already know how that's going to work out. And just to do it a little bit differently, remember you can also solve this by adding 4 to both sides and taking the square roots of both sides. You will get the same answer as if you did it the way I did it on the left-hand factor. So there are two places, uh, there are two values of x, right, that are a 0. So the solutions are negative 2 and 2 for this equation on the left, and those are called the zeros of the function. So the answers here, the answer to your question, find the zeros are plus or minus 2, okay? But um, if you graphed it, graphically this means two and negative two. And really, if I were going to write those as ordered pairs, that's 2, 0, and negative 2, 0 are x-intercepts. So let's just look at the graph of um, f of x equals x squared minus 4. Now, I'm not going to go over how I graph parabolas. That's in other videos, and hopefully you already know how to do this. Graphing y equals x squared minus 4. The y-intercept and the vertex happen to be at 0, negative 4. The vertex is at 0, negative 4. And that's also the y-intercept you see right here. And then it crosses the x-axis here at 2, 0 and negative 2, 0, which are the roots that we got by setting this equal to 0. All right, so what we're getting at here is that they're all related, whether you're talking about the solutions, the roots, or the zeros of the polynomial. And usually, if we're talking about graphing, we'll just really call those the real zeros, okay? Because if they're not real numbers, like if you didn't have, um, you know, if you, if you had numbers like 2i, that's not on the x-axis. So the real zeros are really where it crosses the x-axis, are the solutions, that show where it crosses the x-axis. So look at what happens here. If I say solve x squared plus 1 equals 0, we could just subtract 1 from both sides. 
take the square root of both sides, and remember the square root of negative 1 is i. Those aren't real numbers. So this one is going to have no x-intercepts when it's written as a function. f of x equals x squared plus 1. Notice, even there's, though there's solutions to x squared plus 1 equals 0, they're not real solutions. So notice what happens if you try graphing it, it will not cross the x-axis. So if they said find the zeros of x squared plus 1, well, there um, are no real zeros which means if there's no real zeros, it does not cross the x-axis. But there are two zeros, there are two numbers you could put in for x to make that equation true. All right, so that's a little introduction. So you have the language down when you're talking about looking for solutions or roots, or if you're talking about functions and we're looking for the real zeros. This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic.